Hey, welcome back. We're last episode. We did some things for Stuart Council. Oh, oh, I did have to leave the place. Oh. Hmm? What was that just now? Was it just my imagination? No, it couldn't have been. You have also sensed the disturbance at the zoo. Huh? Is that you, Velimar? Wait, did I just feel the same thing you felt yesterday? There was movement within the earth legs, but not solely that. I have sensed something else. Then it sounds like I've got an investigation to do. But it came from that direction. And that can only mean... Correct. The structure beneath which I once lay dormant, known to you and your friends as the Old Schoolhouse. Oh boy, we're going back to the old schoolhouse. It's been a while. It's been a long while. Oh, oh, I'm back to gameplay. Hello. <laughs> Bring it away. Does Rain still have a key for it? Uh, going to inspect the old schoolhouse will cause the main story to advance. As a result, all unfinished questions will disappear. Inspect the building. Oh boy! Strange. I can't sense anything abnormal. Valimar said he sensed movement in the earth veins below us, but... Aha! There you are. <laughs> Toval! <laughs> Toval? Oh, everybody's friend. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah, tell me about it. What brings you here? You need me for something? Nah, nothing like that. I'm just in Trista for work I need Saren Mict for, you see. I figured while I was here, I might as well come and see how things have been with you. Then I saw you walking off over here, and it seemed like the perfect time to catch up and say hey, so, you know, here I am. This is that old building Valimar used to be sealed away in, huh? Sarah's the one who told me all about it, but she wasn't lying about how creepy it is. It's got this real weird air about it. Why are you hanging around here? Well, I thought there was... Um, actually, it looks like it was just my imagination, so don't worry about it. Okay? Still, by the sound of it, the guild's been keeping you busy lately. Has your workload lightened up at all? <laughs> it's relatively peaceful right now, yeah. It won't last, though. If anything, it's only going to get worse. I'm sure. Thanks to Crossbell being annexed before a full-on war could break out, things have, on the surface, calmed down. That's partly thanks to you, too. The only problem is, now there's no power out there at home or abroad capable of stopping him. And by him, I mean our friend the Blood and Iron Chancellor, of course. <sighs> hmm? Uh, it's nothing. The only people who know the truth about me and him are the ones who were there that day. Still, I wouldn't be surprised if Prince Oliver and Viscount Arsade have worked it out already. How much should I tell him? Don't worry, Reen. About what? Sarah's told me no more about what went down in that castle than she feels I need to know. I'm not privy to any details involving your friend's death or your private business. I can't pretend I haven't managed to fill in a few gaps just from putting two and two together, though. Sorry. It's not like I don't trust you or anything. I've just got a lot of things I need to sort out in my own head first. Oh, I don't doubt it. I'm guessing time will help in that regard, but it'll only go so far. Hey, Green. I know I've asked you this before, but... You sure you wouldn't consider becoming a bracer? <sighs> I really do think you'd be a natural. That you've got the physical strength goes without saying, but... I think your mindset is right up our alley, too. The guild might be kind of limited in what it can do here in Erebonia, but we do work all over the continent. I'm not saying leave everything behind and run. It'd be a good chance to look within yourself and think things through. That is true. But I'm afraid I'll have to decline. It certainly seems to be a wonderful profession, judging by the work that you and Instructor Sarah do, but I feel like I should see the path I've chosen through to the end. I've got Valimar to think about, too. Well, if that's what you want. That's a real shame, though. 
And here was me thinking I'd be able to bring a promising rookie into the fold, too. Eh, no big. We'll see if you change your mind come graduation. I'm not giving up on you just yet. <laughs> well, I'm flattered. Oh, there he is. <laughs> huh. Now there's a familiar voice. Elise, your highness. Wow. What did we do to deserve this honor? Reen. Toval. It's wonderful to see you both again. <laughs> I must say, I wasn't expecting to find the two of you here. Alone. Um, moving right past that, what brings you out here? Princess. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I spoke to you yesterday, you sounded a little despondent. Which is what prompted me to tell her if she was that worried, she should come and pay you a visit. <sighs> I can see why Elise would come here, but I'm surprised you decided to accompany her. <laughs> You've got to be two of the most fearless young ladies in Erebonia. Although, with the third most fearless young lady in Erebonia as an escort, I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about. I'm honored you would say so. It's good to see you again, Toval. Likewise. We're not exactly on the same side these days, but there's no need to let that stop us from being friendly off the clock. I'd like nothing more, honestly. Oh, I... <sighs> I, uh... I'm, I, I assure you my accompanying them was purely by coincidence. Oh, I know. If anything, I'm the one who's putting you out. I seem to be the reason they came here, after all. I... <laughs> I never once thought you were putting me out, so don't worry. I did wonder whether it might be best to stay out of your sight, truth be told. Please, don't think like that. I was the one at fault, not you. <laughs> <laughs> I really am sorry, though. I was being so childish. Not at all. If I hadn't been so self-righteous, I'm truly sorry. It looks like another formidable foe has entered the fray. M your Highness, please! Reen, I swear, you're a damn magnet for trouble when it comes to women. Why? Why? No, Reen's innocent! <laughs> He's a good boy! Well, this sure is an odd place for everyone to be hanging out in the middle of the day. How does everybody know where we are? Oh, hey, Celine. We're just expecting a slow and steady gathering of our friends. Celine! Oh! Oh, how I've longed to pet that glossy black fur again! Ugh, you're never going to give this up, are you? I thought something felt odd over here, but I guess that's because of you guys. Oof, I totally forgot until you said that. Forgot what? Is something wrong? Oh yeah, you did say you were here for some reason. Yeah, I sent something strange earlier, then... Huh? How? Is that the old schoolhouse's bell? Wait, didn't Sarah say that the last time this rang... What's happening? The building is glowing? Selene, this is just like before. Yeah, this is obviously serious. Unlike the last time, however, there doesn't appear to be any kind of barrier around it. What in the world? It's just like the first night of the festival. Reen, what's happening here? Wait, Elise? Your Highness? Whoa! Claire and Toval are here too? What's going on here? De hey, same, same question here. <laughs> Do my eyes deceive me? Are all three of the fabulous fifteens here in one place? Way to keep your priorities in check, Angie. What's happening here, Celine? Fabulous fifteens? Don't ask me. I just got here. Green. Can you tell us everything you know? I think we all need to be apprised of the situation. Reed explained what he knew, but he didn't understand the situation much better than they did. But with no barrier surrounding the school, like last time, they finally decided to enter the old schoolhouse. 
So, does that mean that I'll get the chance to add Elise and Tolvol into my party too? And Claire, of course. Uh, I don't think the princess would come with us. All she could really do were arts. She didn't really have any physical combat abilities. Oh god, we're in infinite space. That's freaking cool, though. What happened here? This doesn't look anything like the inside of the old schoolhouse. It's changed form many times in the past. But at this point, it no longer even feels like we're inside a building. The strange rumors about this place were around even when I was a student. But I never pictured anything like this. When was the last time it changed? A while ago. The last time anything this extreme happened was when the seventh floor opened up. S still, that was underground, right? This is the first time it's happened above ground, I think. Yeah. There's no sign of that door with the elevator inside, either. It's like all someone did was snap their fingers and the whole interior was changed in no time flat. I tried, but even my clairvoyance isn't enough to tell us anything. Nothing feels particularly off to me, either. Hmm? Well, if you two can't work anything out, the rest of us sure won't. But we can't exactly just leave and pretend we didn't see anything. Gonna try and see if Valimar knows anything? Yeah. Heed my call. Valimar, the Ashen Knight! Oh, goodness. You know how to do spatial translocation with him? That's a thing. <laughs> Valimar. Do you understand anything about the situation we're in? We witches only know half the secrets concerning the Divine Knights. But you're one yourself. Maybe you know something? Hmm. My numbers have yet to fully return. What I can confirm is that this place was created by the gnomes. Gnomes? Weren't they also responsible for building the spirit shrines we visited? Indeed. They're said to have worked with the Hexen clan's ancestors 1,200 years ago in order to accomplish something. That is correct. Some of their finest technology is gathered in this place. Wait. Okay, it's not the same spelling. I had to look it up. I was, I was, my brain went to like George because his last name is Gnome, and I thought it was the same spelling. Turns out it's not. There may be a connection there. But I, I'm too tired to figure it out. The creation of a large-scale phase space, the expansion of flexible materials, as well as the development of the trial system. Like the trial all of us overcame earlier this year? And presumably the same ones Dreykul's the Lionheart and the Lance Maiden overcame before us. It must be. Crow was supposed to have overcome one under Ortis too. Tell us everything that you know, Valimar. Why did the gnomes make a place like this to begin with? Why seal away the Divine Knights and make us overcome trials to obtain them? And what's happening here, right now? I have lost the knowledge with which to answer your questions. However, the key to all is known as the Great One, the first to be born, and the last to stand. The Great One, huh? The first to be born, and the last to stand. I feel as though I've heard those words before. Oh, I'm sure it would mean something to Vita and the Elder, but I'm clueless. Furthermore, the entity you fought during the Jetlock trial you overcame is none other than the Shadow of the Great One. That huge thing? Hmm. I feel like something's clicking into place in my head, but not really. Still. If what happened here before was a trial for us to overcome, is what's happening now a trial as well? Most likely so. However, this is not an official trial you were intended to complete. I suspect some disturbance triggered the activation of a different trial, resulting in the current turn of events. Let me get this straight. 
This is all related to the truth behind what happened 1,200 years ago, right? We've gotten ourselves wrapped up in something that's truly out of this world, haven't we? Wait, you aren't all thinking of... <sighs> You're gonna try and get to the bottom of this, aren't you? Yes. It might sound strange, but this almost feels like a continuation of the first night of the festival. And, by coincidence, this also happens to be our final free day. I think we can all agree that we have a duty to see this through. And we'll be sure to do so by the end of the day. I doubt it will compare to the trials we faced in that infernal castle, but it should prove interesting nonetheless. <laughs> like there was even a point in asking, Sarah. I do believe we should be acting with a little more caution. Where do you begin preparing for a situation like this? Well, if you all insist, but we're coming too. You will? That would be a huge help. It would certainly make our investigation easier if you were with us. You guys rock. Yeah, you're all super strong! <laughs> In that case, I would be more than willing to assist you as well. Sharon! <laughs> Stop doing that! <laughs> Sharon? How long have you... Can you maybe stop doing the thing with the skulking around in the shadows and popping out at the last minute? Oh, Lady Sarah, I did nothing of the sort. I only arrived mere moments ago. <sighs> Why are all of you always like this? Right. Okay. This time, I'll be coming with you all to make sure you don't push yourselves too hard. Uh... But this is our final free day, too, you know. We want to make it one to remember as much as anyone else. I'll stay here and back you guys up. If you need anything, just say the word. Thanks. <laughs> we appreciate it. Well, if everyone else is joining in on the fun, the two of us would like to assist you as well. What? Your Highness, I'm not sure... Please don't try and stop me, Captain. This academy was founded by one of my ancestors. And as a member of the Arnor family, I hardly feel that I can turn a blind eye to what is happening here. And oh my god! I just so happened to receive this wonderful gift from my brother. She has an horrible staff! That looks like... An horrible staff? Though it's a different size than the ones we use. Hold on a minute. Isn't that the Epstein Foundation's latest model? The Epstein Foundation's? Weren't their staves the original model for the ones we've been testing here? <laughs> My brother used his connections to get it for me, and it's been adjusted especially for me, so I have no problems using it. A member of the Arner family using a specially adjusted orbital staff should be quite formidable. Yeah, I can see her being a real force to be reckoned with using it. Naturally, if Her Highness is going, I will be accompanying her. And I'm afraid that nothing you say is going to change my mind. But... <laughs> you're fighting a losing battle, Reen. If you're so worried about her, why not take her along so you can keep an eye on her instead? Alright, I get it. Class 7? And everyone else kind enough to aid us? Our mission is to investigate and resolve the strange situation here. This is our, Class 7's, final trial. So let's give it everything we've got! Right! Uh. Dude! They're so weak! <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Um, Elliot, of course. Um, let's see. Uh, Tofol, because it's been a while. Uh, let's see here. Who else? Who else? Machius. And Laura, of course. I want to throw in. I'm gonna throw in these two, just so they can get some training in and. Get their levels up. So yeah, that'll do the trick. Uh, obtain the following costumes and t attachments. Dude. 
Uh, the inside of the old school house has been transformed into the area called the Reverie Cor Corridor. This area has no fixed structure and changes its layout completely every time you enter the dungeon from outside. Every time, monsters will revive and treasure chests are re reset, allowing you to conquer it as many times as you so desire. You can reorganize the party by taking, uh, by talking to any of the team members at the base of the corridor. After reaching certain points, you'll be able to warp back to this base area. Huh. To change the party, talk to one of the allies. Oh, so it's just like last time. All class of members and supporters can temporarily use Overdrive no matter who they are linked with. The amount of link XP gained in battles has also been increased to three times its usual amount. That is very concerning. <laughs> the enemies of this area are significantly stronger than those in the final chapter and must be approached with due caution. Uh, the specifics of enemies fought will be recorded in the EX Reverie Corridor section of the notebook. Dude! Dude! Um, is there an orbital recharge station here? There is! Holy shit. Uh, purchase Phantasmal Mirror. Whoa! Uh, Chevalier's Mirror. Item that lets, uh, lets man borrow the power of a certain someone in battle only works in the epilogue's reverie corridor. Witch's Mirror, uh, Black Rabbit, Courageous's, or Courageous, I mean, and Silver Mirror. Wait. Wait. Certain someone. Does this allow me to turn into Crow? Um. Whoops. Yeah. That's still not enough for it. Is it like 200,000? Shit. <laughs> it is indeed 200,000. Wow! Uh, alright. Cool beans. I guess I'll just... Excuse me. Uh, how do I get Mira? Aside from fighting. I get it from exchanging. Can I exchange with you? I can. That's neat. Let's exchange a couple of Earth Sephiroth. Uh, 1,000 water, 1,000 fire, 1,000 wind, whoops, that's how I do the trick. Yeah, I got me enough! Now let's buy a Phantasmal Mirror and see what it does. Uh, Phantasmal Mirror. Uh, yes. Chevalier! Equipped! Um... It has done nothing so far. Um... We'll see what it does next time. Thank you for watching if you like this video, and you want to see more! Uh, it would be great if you could subscribe, and that would be neat. Uh, also pressing the bell for all notifications helps out a lot too, because then you will actually see what I post, probably. Depending on how YouTube... Deep, if YouTube deems it worthy. <laughs> but anyways, next episode, I'm gonna go and do some stuff. That was a complete sentence. <laughs> that elaborated on the goals of this episode. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. I'm gonna save.